I see wild horses almost every day. Uh, I see wild horses from my house at times. I live in the, the mountains in the Paras here, northeast of town, and uh, saw wild horses on the way to work this morning. Um, beautiful, love to see them. Romantic symbol of the West. We can go on and on. Valuable resource. But like any resource, they need to be properly managed. And at that point, their numbers need to be managed. And the Bureau of Land Management and the U.S. Forest Service have been um, completely unable to do so. I can tell you that statewide, we're probably three times over appropriate management level for the number of wild horses that we have in the state. If we removed all the livestock off of the HMAs that have livestock grazing on them, with the, with the population growth that we have, it wouldn't be very long before the numbers of horses took away the livestock AUMs as well as the AUMs that were identified for the wild horses. So bottom line is, it's, it's removal of livestock's not the answer to the horse problem. There for a while we did make progress. Uh, I think it was probably uh, 2008 and we were really close to being at AML nationally. But again, then, then Congress went in and took away some of our tools. And when our tools are gone, then it takes away our management capabilities. This policy that sets the grazing limits for rangeland grasses at four inches for cattle yet allows horses to graze that same grass all the way to the bare ground. Does that really make sense? Any outdoorsman who is out in Nevada uh, sees it all the time. And uh, it is one of those problems that is probably next to wildfire, maybe the most devastating impact to our healthy rangelands and a major impact to our wildlife populations. They've looked at the sterilization stuff, and it's like, as something that is administered completely by the BLM, it's probably not gonna work. And it's just because they don't have the resources to do it. So they either need a whole bunch more resources from Congress, which quite frankly uh, is hard to get the Eastern folks, which is where most of the people are in Congress, uh, to vote for that before anything really could be done in the way of population control, you almost need to at least remove them down to where they're not damaging the range and remove those excess numbers. Once you get there, you could manage those by sterilizing. And I'm talking about simple surgical procedures to permanently sterilize mariners. Right now, our horses produce at a rate to where they double their population every three and a half to four years. The reproductive rates cause a boom and bust cycle in the horse numbers, some starving without enough forage. In May of 2016, the Washington DC office of the BLM issued a statement acknowledging the wild horse issue on Western public lands was out of control, financially unsustainable, and asked ranchers, environmental groups, and horse advocates to help them in finding a solution. One option would be to have ranchers assist with administering birth control. There's some ideas that are intriguing to say, okay, these horses are on the Argenta allotment. Let's make the people in the Argenta allotment, those folks that, that are the permittees there, let's give them a part in this. Quite frankly, if you don't involve the people that are on the range, you know, those folks who are the most interested, th then I think any solution is gonna be problematic. Of course you oversee them. Of course you monitor how they're doing it. Of course you see how those results are. You know, I think that's probably a good idea and it's one that needs to go to the Wild Horse and Burrow Advisory Committee. That needs to be then handed over to the BLM and it needs to be addressed and looked at because I think there are some possibilities with that. While wild horse numbers continue to rise, ranching in the West has seen a reduction from 18.2 million AUMs in 1954 to 8.3 million in 2014.